LDBC. This is your boy Coach Shelton Harrison. Go live, live, live on the Coach Shelton Harrison Boxing and MMA Show Live. Okay, folks, listen to me. Okay, listen. You know, I've read, I read a couple things, man. I've read a few things, and I was reading some of the media outlets that were discussing Andre Ward. And I figured, okay, let me see what the media outlets are saying about the fight, and let me just kind of do some recaps. And you know, every last media outlet that I read, except for boxing scene, they completely, man, completely just destroyed Andre Ward. I mean, didn't give the man any kind of props, any kind of credibility. They gave him nothing. They completely decimated and trashed this man. That's that's what they do. They did it. And I was looking because they were talking about Andre Ward. His new mandatory is is better be, which, okay, I'm thinking this would be a good fight. Let me see what these guys are reporting. And, you know, man, most of these guys are pretty much saying the same thing. They were saying that Andre Ward is going to have to come up with a scheme. Yeah, two of the papers was talking about Andre Ward got to come up with a scheme. So Andre Ward gets to have a scheme and Better Beeb has a plan. A scheme to win. Like he's got to come up with a different wrestling scheme. See, do y'all see how these cold words, do you, do you understand where I'm going with these cold words? Andre Ward has to come up with the scheme. Get that? I mean, understand what I'm saying. He's got to have a scheme. Like he's some kind of thief. Like he's some kind of thief. A scheme? People who still come up with schemes. People who still come up with schemes. So you're calling the man a thief. So basically, oh, he can't get a decision. He's going to steal a decision. I mean, that's where we're going with this. A lot of you, you know what? Y'all need to start reading in between the lines. Coach, you just paranoid. Nah, man, I'm, I'm real. So Andre Ward got to have a scheme, but better be gets a plan. Oh, yeah, he need to plan on doing this to Andre Ward, but Andre Ward need to come up with a wrestling scheme. Hey, man, it's never going to it's never going to be fair. And I and I, I really and truly I, I completely realize that and that's why I ain't been so overly critical on fighters like Andre Ward, on fighters like Errol Spence Jr. I ain't, I ain't been so critical because these these paper articles, they're critical They're for some reason, man, for some reason. We can say we, we can say it's how they look, yeah. But they really hard, they, and they even harder on Errol Spence Jr. Okay, you got your publications that are harder on Errol Spence Jr. And really, point blank, the truth of it is, y'all want to know what the truth is? There's not enough black writers, man. There's not enough because you know there needs to be a balance, man. There's too many dudes sitting behind their computers, man, writing these articles and writing these blogs, man. And they're highly opinionated, man. And they always have an opinion, man, when it comes to certain fighters. And people, that's just the way that is. They always have an opinion. And their opinions, man, are always negative. I mean, how the hell can you have Andre Ward, the most positive person in boxing, the most positive speaking person in boxing, but he gets the most negativity? Are you serious? Andre Ward is the most positive person in boxing inside the ring and outside the ring. You can say what you want. You can say dirty. Look, man, both of them dudes was dirty. So, I mean, what, what is it that, why is it that Andre Ward is the, it, he's a scheme, okay? He has to come up with a scheme and, 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 he, and he's really physical and dirty. So, okay, now he's a dirty, he's a dirty thief. I mean, people, cold words, cold words. But these publications didn't talk about what Kovalev did. Oh, they didn't talk about the constant headlocks. No, no, no. See, they didn't want to talk about that. Because that would make it seem like that Kovalev is no longer a victim. No. And the fight they were talking about, it, 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 there was no mention of Kovalev. But you know that these dudes writing these articles, they're still very salty. That Andre Ward won beat Kovalev. They're very salty. They're very salty. I don't even think a draw would have been good enough for these guys. The thing of it is, man, guys like Andre Ward, guys like Errol Spence Jr., guys like Andre Berto, guys like uh, Keith Thurman, guys, guys like Showtime Sean Porter, they're going to be forever trashed in the news media. They're going to be trashed. Every chance that these news media folks get, they're going to trash these guys. And it never fails, man. It never fails. And I'm looking at these articles. The only person, the only, the only publication that seemed to kind of was not as biased was Boxing Scene. 
And they did mention the constant headlocks of, of, of Kovalev. They mentioned that. But these other people, they don't mention that. And I noticed too, have y'all noticed what a lot of these fighters been doing? They hadn't really been talking to these publications. Like they ain't talking to them. Because I think that these guys are starting to figure it out, man. Hey, these publications don't like people that look like me. I mean, I think they're figuring it out. If you notice, have you ever seen Keith Thurman, his last couple of interviews? He's not giving no big name. Pre- look, man, they interview him with YouTube channels. These guys, they watch our YouTube videos and they know for a fact that the YouTube channels, by most part, they're going to try to call it as fair as they can. And these guys are getting more love from YouTube. And I'm telling you, and I'm going to tell you what's going to start happening. What these guys are going to start doing, man, they're going to start getting YouTube channels, media credentials, and they're going to say, hey, come to the fight. We'll give you credentials, and, you know, you interview us after the fight. They're going to start picking and choosing who's going to do these interviews because these big-time publications, yeah, they'll get their interviews, but see, the fighters, they're going to stop talking to them directly. They're going to stop talking to these uh, these. They're going to stop talking to these big time papers and these big time publications. They're going to stop talking to them directly, man. They're going to stop. But a lot of the fighters, they're beginning to figure it out. And it's going to be long. It's not going to be long. I guarantee you. Because many of these fighters, man, they watch these videos. I done had several fighters. I done had several people, you know, their teams get at me. In boxing and MMA. I've had several fighters, okay. I've had several managers actually reach out to me. And ask me questions about how I cover a fight and when can I, when do I make post-fight videos and how long does it take for me to do it. Guys, they're watching. And they're looking at what we do on YouTube because we are the least unbiased. We're going to, most of the time, most of us, we're going to try to report it the best way we can. Man, I'm glad these fighters are doing this. I'm glad that these fighters, and Keith Thurman kind of start. Keith Thurman really, it, he on YouTube, <laughs> He'll talk to a YouTube channel in a minute. And I don't blame him. You get you about 10,000 subs. And, and pretty much, man, they're going to start looking for you. They're going to start reaching out to you. I ain't even at 10,000 subs. I don't have managers or fighters reach out to me. And ask me about how, how do I do things and what do I do? How often can I come to a fight? I, I've, I've had that happen. I ain't even at 10,000 yet. Can you imagine when my channel grow to 10,000 subscribers? I, I probably will have media credit. I, I don't know. But I tell you what, I can do a whole heck of a lot better than some of these publications doing, man. Because what they doing, Andre Ward, man, it's criminal, man. It really is, man. You can't mention anything positive about this dude. Nothing. Everything come out your mouth, oh, Andre Ward need a scheme. Andre Ward need the scheme. Thieves. Literal thieves make up schemes. Okay? A thief need a scheme. But a person come up with a plan. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to hear. I'm not trying to hear, oh, man, coach, you just, you know, you be a little too sensitive. No, nah, I'm not trying to hear that. I'm not trying to hear that, man. Go ahead and give this man his respect. He moved up and waited and fought a man that killed a man in the ring. He fought a man that's been knocking out, you know, most of all his previous opponents. I'm talking about stopping him, knocking him out, beating these dudes out of their brains. And this dude survived the smaller man who moved up and wait to take on a challenge. Not one of these damn publications even want to say that. But, but I'm going to say it. The coach is going to say it. He moved up in weight and took on the toughest challenger in the weight division. Who else is doing that? Oh, but they want to praise Gennady Golovkin for taking for beating up uh, Dominic Ways. They, they, they want to praise him for fighting a welterweight. They want to praise him for that. But Andre Ward right here, right here, right now, can't get the praise. He moving up and taking on not just the guy, the toughest guy. The man that's done killed somebody in the ring. That person, you taking him on and came out victorious. See, they can't stand that. They can't stand it. Because in their brain, Andre Ward was supposed to lose. And they're already picking Better Beeb to get in there and beat Andre Ward because Better Beeb is going to have a plan. And Andre Ward is going to have a scheme. Good luck with that. You guys are going to be wrong again. And I'm going to tell you, the reason why you guys suck so bad at what y'all do, you guys suck. Because, see, you guys aren't looking at the landscape. You guys aren't looking at what the fighter possess. 
You're not looking at what angle this fighter is throwing these jabs from. You're not looking at where, how does he get head control. You're not looking at how he gets lead foot dominance. You're not looking at where he's putting his jab at to disrupt the flow of offense from another fighter. You're not looking at where he's putting his knee at when he's in the clinch. You're not looking at these things. You're not because you know why. You know what you're looking at. You're looking at the content of their color instead of the content of their skill set. That's what you guys are looking at. Whether you like it or don't like it, you sit down and you listen to it because that's the truth. But I tell you what. I'll be a media platform outlet. And I tell you what, I'm going to give Andre Ward and fighters like Andre Ward his credit. Oh, I'm going to give him his just due. You better believe that the coach going to give Andre Ward his just due. And my friends, that is just the way that is. This is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. I'm done.